Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of Healing Stars. This is a chart for Monday, 8am set for London. However, I use whole signs as houses. Well, we've had a, a huge shift over the last week. We've had the sun move into Scorpio. Here it is in the turquoise sector. Venus joined the sun on Saturday. And we had an eclipse last week also, solar, partial solar eclipse starting the new moon. And now Mars has just changed sign into Capricorn for about six weeks. Plus, Mercury is now going forward. Hooray, I always say when that happens. So that is a huge number of events all happening within a few days. So how have you been feeling? New moons are always time to go within. The moon is dark, it's invisible. And this one in particular was very full because it's to do with Scorpio, a water sign. And Scorpio is the sign that goes deep. I am a sun sign Scorpio. And I must say, I get rather fed up with the sting in the tail story that often accompanies the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is three symbols. Yes, it's the scorpion, that little creature that scuttles along the ground, goes into its little hole, hides. However, the next symbol is the eagle. And the eagle is a bird of vision. The eagle soars above adversity. The eagle is a strong creature. It's used as a symbol for the United States. And I want to reiterate that Scorpion and Scorpio are also the eagle. The third symbol for Scorpio is the phoenix or the dove. And if you've seen Harry Potter, you might know also about the phoenix. You know, it, re it rebirths. So Scorpio is a sign to do with transformation from one lower being, this little insect, the scorpion, to the bird, the beautiful, strong eagle, right up to the highest energy of a symbol of a phoenix rebirth. So I want you to bear that in mind this month, because Venus, the goddess of love, is now with the sun. She's symbolically in the underworld, invisible, and there is this very powerful trine, a flow of energy it starts the week on the 27th, it's there, it will last you for quite a few days, in fact all week really, it's trining Neptune. Neptune is all about deep emotions. It's the god of the sea. It's oneness. It connects us all. We are, of course, a planet to do with oceans and, of course, water is in our physical beings, our bodies. So we might sense the mood other people, of what's going on in the globe, and be ultra sensitive this week. The other important transit is Mars up there in the royal blue sector. And you can see here's Pluto also in Capricorn. Now they don't join until the 10th of November. However, Mars is now moving towards Pluto. When we talk about orbs, how close it gets, that will be really in about a week's time. Mars is really good in the sign of Capricorn. Mars is how we achieve something, how we get things done. It's our will, our will to go into battle, to fight for what we believe in, a cause. And in Capricorn, it's exalted because there's strategy involved. It's Saturn's sign. Very good for business to have Mars in Capricorn, but also it's about a team, the general. I always like the film The Gladiator, it shows that off beautifully, how as a team the gladiators come together under the general and they win the fight. The other wonderful thing you can see in this chart is this wonderful grand trine that starts the week. This is a positive note, it's rather wonderful to have that. And Jupiter is also connected, here's Jupiter 
here's Uranus, the planet of change, and they are all now connected in what we call a kite to the north node of the moon and Mercury. Now it's moving forward. Therefore, news, watch the news, see what stories are happening in the news. And also, what messages now come to you that have been sort of on the back burner through the month of October? Because now you can move forward with those communications, those ideas. And they could be revolutionary because Uranus is involved. They could be something that comes to you out of blue. The other energy that's going on in the week is the moon starts in Sagittarius. We've just had it opposite the new moon in Scorpio, so it's in a fiery sign of Sagittarius. On Monday, Venus will be, as you can see, here it is, it's exactly trining Neptune. That's really rather beautiful, very romantic. Venus and Neptune are the two energies to do with the feminine, to do with love, to do with transcendence and bliss. That's Neptune. So higher vibration, but Venus is now connected to Neptune, the crown chakra, you can call that. On Tuesday, that's when the moon, the sun rather, will exactly try and Neptune. That's at 9.49. That's also early in the morning. I will move the chart forward one day. Okay, so here's the sun, who's one degree a day. Those of you who don't know that. The moon will be going into Capricorn. So from Sagittarius into Capricorn on Tuesday, then of course it will join Mars. That's a one day a month. That always happens. But this is also very good for focusing the mind. The moon's our emotions. So when it's with Mars, it can actually be unpredictable accidents, but Mars is strongly grounded in the sign of Capricorn. Therefore, it's a very good day to set plans in motion. Wednesday, well, Wednesday, not much is happening on Wednesday. So it's a day to sort of relax. It's quite nice to have some of those days. And then by the 30th, Thursday, that's when the moon will then be going into Aquarius. It's right at the end, early in the morning, and through the day it moves into Aquarius. So it's going to the last signs of the zodiac, to groups, friendships, humanity. That's what the moon's always about. So it's a good day to be in a group or connect with other people. By Friday, now we're talking Halloween. Samhain. Friday is the waxing half moon in Aquarius. So it's the first quarter, in other words. And that's a tension, but that again happens once a month. By Saturday, things start to get a little bit more interesting for my astrologist hat on because the the moon now is going to oppose Jupiter his friend Jupiter from Aquarius Mars will then sextile Neptune Mercury sextiles Jupiter the moon moves into Pisces and Venus sextiles Pluto that's a lot of positive harmony going on on Saturday Pisces the moon's in Pisces and as soon as it does that, on Sunday, that's when it starts to really reverberate and up the ante of the Scorpio planets. Because now, as you can see, look at this fabulous trine that's occurring now. Neptune, the Moon, Chiron, the Sun and Venus, all together, Saturn's right at the end of Scorpio, all together, incredibly good day for healing. I am actually giving a workshop this weekend from that very point of view. The other thing I want to mention, just going back in time, is that Mercury, here it is, that's a Sunday, 21 degrees, that's the North Node. So in the course of the week, it is actually contacting the Node and opposite Uranus, albeit slightly ahead of Uranus. The nodes are an axis, north node and south node. So information can come in through the north node to do with Venus. 
and the gifts can come from the south node talents to do with Aries, which is Mars. So Mercury, the messenger, is connecting us to Venus and Mars through the week. I've just done a webinar on the solar eclipse. If you haven't caught it, please, please watch it. It's uh, 45 minutes length, roughly. And I have a healing exercise at the end to do the letting go. Because Scorpio is opposite Taurus. Taurus is all about holding on. Scorpio is letting go. And of course, through this week, Halloween, the Day of the Dead, it's actually letting go of the past. And I would like you to bear that in mind this week. Letting go is about us moving on into a positive future. So we can use the energy of Jupiter in Leo to good effect. Thank you for watching. Speak to you in a week's time.